Today we are going to be reading from the 5th chapter, verse number 13. Sarva karmani manasa sanyasyaste sukham vashi navadware pure dehi naiva kurvanna karayan When the embodied living being controls his nature and mentally renounces all actions, he resides happily in the city of nine gates, the material body, neither working nor causing work to be done. So this is one of my very favorite verses from the Bhagavad Gita because there is very deep concepts to be understood and today we are going to try to go a little more detailed. So the first point being discussed is controls his nature. What do we mean by controlling our nature? Controlling his nature refers to keeping ourselves in the mode of goodness and obstructing the mode of passion and ignorance from affecting us. The mode of goodness can be cultivated by studying the scriptures, controlling the senses, associating with like-minded spiritualists, rising early in the morning, eating only foods in the mode of goodness and in being satisfied with whatever our destiny holds for us. The mode of passion involves great hankering and desire, unsatisfaction and more and more material hankerings, greed. And the mode of ignorance is displayed in madness, anger, revenge and uh, losing hope and all these other symptoms. The second point discussed is mentally renounces all actions, which basically means that whatever actions this body is performing, we have to realize that it is the modes which are forcing the body to act. Essentially, whatever we are doing, whatever our body does, is basically controlled by these three modes. The mode of goodness results in a calm and peaceful outlook. The mode of passion results in strong material desires and hankerings. And the mode of ignorance is manifest in lamentation, anger, these kind of symptoms. Whenever our body performs some actions, mentally, immediately we should renounce that, that it wasn't me who has done it, rather it was the three modes of nature who dictated my body to do so. And that is also based on my desire, the Atma's desire. The Atma associating with different situations desires to enjoy in different ways. And Lord Krishna as Paramatma within the heart, He orders the material nature to fulfill those desires. So in accordance to that order, the mode of goodness, passion and ignorance, they force the body to work in certain ways. The third point is that resides in the city of nine gates. So what are these nine gates? All of, all of us, we have nine different openings within our body. The two eyes, two nostrils, one mouth. The two ears, that makes seven. And then the anus and the genitals, that is the eighth and ninth hole within our body. So this body is compared to a city with nine gates in it. And these are the nine openings. So resides in the city of nine gates happily. That means once he is convinced of this understanding or he his thought process works in this way, then he realizes that actually I am not the doer of these activities. Rather, it is the three modes which are acting through my various senses and body. Because he had desired to enjoy in various ways, now the three modes are making his body act in such a way and he is simply observing it. He wanted to enjoy like this and now he is observing his body trying to enjoy like that. So this is the understanding of the liberated soul and doesn't create work. The fourth point was he doesn't create work nor does he work. So these concepts are new. These are very difficult to understand because we have never thought in this way before. But we have to get used to it by again and again hearing it. And at the same time, we should endeavor to realize our true ego. We understand that we are not this body and this body is being operated by the three modes. But who am I actually? What is my true identity? So all of us, we are Atma, we are indestructible, eternal parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. And our only engagement is to serve and try to please the Supreme Lord. Doing so, we will be also pleased. In a nutshell, a self-realized soul or a pure devotee understands his original position as a servitor of the Lord, either in friendship, either in a parental mood or in a lover's mood. And then once he is situated in that identity, he doesn't identify with this material body anymore. He doesn't think that I am fat, I am thin, I am black, I am white, I am male or female, I am Indian or Western, I am Hindu or Muslim or Christian. Rather, he simply observes the journey that his body is going through based on his past desires. 
and he does not associate with those desires he does not lament or desire anything in this material sphere but rather remains engaged spiritually in his spiritual identity he is always mentally engaged in serving the lord in a loving relationship and that's how he is able to remain aloof from this material identification and undisturbed so this is a very detailed deep understanding we can get more clarity and knowledge from the bhagavad gita specifically from the third chapter 27th verse the fifth chapter 13th verse which is this verse the 13th chapter 21st verse 13th chapter verse number 30 and 32 14th chapter verse number 5 14th chapter verse number 19 and the 18th chapter verse number 16 so if you're interested in this topic you can further read these verses and get more clarity hari krishna